What's up, guys? Welcome back to the Averse Podcast. Today, we're going to be watching Friday the 13th, Part 3, or at least I am. And then I'm going to be offering commentary over the top of it. Insights, theories, opinions, jokes, all of the above, none of the below. I am streaming it on Amazon Prime, so if you want to watch along so you have a slightly better idea of what I'm talking about at times feel free to or if you own it or have another means of watching it I don't give a fuck what you do you handle your environment I'll handle mine so uh, I'm getting ready to make myself a cup of coffee here once that's done I will sit down at the couch smoke a bowl and then I will give you a countdown when I'm starting the movie just in case you are watching along so that we're queued up and uh, we'll let the good times roll from there So we're going into part three, which I have failed to mention to this point was shot in 3D. I believe, if I'm not mistaken, it was the first feature film of that era to be shot in 3D. Excuse me. And uh, it's a bit goofy as a result in 2D. It doesn't, some of the, the angles and shots, you're like, why the fuck is, what is this? And that's a result of them going so hard on the 3D angle and banking on the novelty of 3D carrying the box office and not really caring about how well it aged as far as a home viewing. I don't think they took that into consideration. I'm not saying they willfully ignored it, or just, but I, don't, I just don't think they realized how dumb some of the shots would look, not in 3D. Because there's supposed to be objects and things coming towards you, and in 2D it's just a funky-ass angle to have the camera. Sometimes the camera's on the floor pointing up. It's just shots you normally wouldn't see in a feature-length film. It's kind of amateur-looking when it's not 3D. Plus, it was the blue and red 3D bullshit that, I mean, it's not 3D, it's just three images. It just, I guess it could trick your eyes into thinking that it's three-dimensional. But it doesn't work for me. For me, it's just like I, uh, I couldn't decide if I wanted the red or the blue pill, and I took both, and it fucked my brain up, and now I'm trapped in between worlds. Did that make sense at all? In my head, it did. I apologize if I sound a little funky. I have some kind of weird shit. I'm in struggling to get over for like two weeks now and I'm stubborn and I don't ever go to the doctor and uh, the extent of my pharmaceutical intake to this point has been Dayquil and NyQuil but not on any kind of a regiment just sporadically when I feel like I need it so I, I suppose when I have that kind of a plan for getting better I can expect these kind of results but hey my immune system once I'm done be stronger in theory yeah because unless this kills me this could be the one that kills me this could be my last podcast guys oh that is hot damn okay so first first things first the chocolate starfish is my man fred durst what do you guys think of Game of Thrones Season 8 so far? <clears throat> uh, without spoiling anything, I just think it sucks. I'll be honest. <coughs> it's diverted away from what made me like Game of Thrones. I liked the complex stories and character building and all the dialogue and the intricacy. And I I feel like we're not getting any of that. In fact, I feel like it's being wiped off the board. Like everything that they worked so hard to create, they're just like knocking it all over in one fell swoop. Seems very clumsy and like not well thought out. I. I don't want to give go into too much detail, but 
fuck, this last season of Game of Thrones has been disappointing. <coughs> okay. So, like I said before, I'm watching Friday the 13th, part three, streaming on Amazon Prime. And I am pushing play in three, two, one, play. There may be an ad advertisement. There is, God damn it. Okay, I'll retell you when the movie's actually starting. I apologize. Okay, now I am pressing play in three, two, one, play. We're gonna get some vintage Paramount. Look at it, look at it. It's gorgeous and it's a retro beauty. I think you have to divert away from it for a certain period of time to be able to go back and appreciate it though. I'm sure that people got tired of it then and they couldn't wait for the new shit. I wasn't even born yet when this came out. I don't. I forgot to check the year. I think it was 82, 83. Frank Mancuso Jr. production. Another Steve Miner film, so same director, two films in a row. Jason is still pretty human. Okay, so they're going to show it. They're doing the same thing the last movie did. They're going to show us the ending and remind us of all the shit that they're about to ignore in this one. In the previous one, they showed us the ending from the original, where Jason's supposed to be dead, his mom gets beheaded, you know, so so on and so forth. Plus, they showed us six minutes of it, and then they make Jason a full-grown man, alive, walking around, killing people, living in the woods. And so you're like, wait a minute, how do you reconcile these two stories existing in the same universe? Where was he in relationship to his mom? How long has he been? You know, all those questions start popping into your head. And they, they walk right into it by showing you the, the examples that you're going to question right away. And now here, this one is less, less funky and more funky at the same time. I'm, they went with the, the beheading and keeping the mom's head and the sweater and all that shit and the kill for mommy. So if you're going to do that, this is your ending, I suppose. You can't do much, much better than this. But, so she hits him in that, in the shoulder, right? With the, uh, the machete. She thinks he's dead. Then she's going to go back to the cabin with Paul. They find the dog, or the dog comes to the door that we saw dead already earlier in the movie. And then she sits down, and Jason, without the sack on his head, jumps through the window and pulls her out. Then we flash to her waking up on a stretcher, asking where Paul is. So we don't know what part of that's supposed to be a dream, if any. But we do know he got hit in the fucking shoulder with that machete. And this is I believe supposed to take place the very next day so technically it's Saturday the 13th or Saturday the 14th rather he's got a brand new shirt on and his shoulder is healed up and working well he's still pretty human at this point but because of the fact that they insist on having an ending where it appears he's dead and then making another movie afterwards they have no choice but to add the supernatural factor in as they move along because otherwise it's inexplicable. They never really acknowledge it, at least not for the first five, six movies that I can remember, and say he's a zombie outright, but it's kind of like a Michael Myers thing where you're just like, well, wait, how did this work out if he isn't? But I would say that Jason lends himself more to the monster zombie realm than Michael does easily. But in these first movies, they're very similar. Jason is more like Michael back then. That's why if you want to talk about uh, a Jason versus Michael movie, excuse me, Michael versus Jason, Michael deserves top billing. If you want to talk about that, I need it to be this Jason 
I need it to be like the Jason from number two or number three that's still pretty much human, that still can be wounded pretty easily. He doesn't appear to have superhuman strength of any kind. He's just a, a burly guy. Once you get into fucking Jason that like is doing John Woo moves on people, that's no competition. That's It's not even close. It would be unfair. But I've said before, I don't like doing a Michael versus Jason film because if you show them together in the same movie, that means to the audience that they're compatible. And I don't think that they are. I don't think that they're the same thing. I don't think that they can exist in the same... Does that make sense? May not. But it's like... I liked him, he's over here now, these two things must be compatible. You're lending too much credit to Jason if you put him in a movie with Michael, in my opinion. Michael stands alone. Like, if you, in order to watch those two battle, you would... They're just di different in the way they move, their postures, how they handle things. It depends on the environment, I suppose, too, a lot. Because Michael's in houses and neighborhoods and rooms, stuff with corners, walls. And Jason's out in the woods. So, like... And J Michael is very much about stalking and then just a strike. He's not like a head-up fighter. It doesn't like it just doesn't seem to mesh well, but they managed to do it with Freddy. It wasn't the greatest movie, but they did it. Ooh, sweet 3D. It's gonna pop out farther. Oh my god. Holy shit. We got the fucking disco theme. Ooh. So they tried to get uh, the gal that played Ginny to come back and be in this one, and she turned him down. I don't know what she thought she was going to be heading on to from here, but it probably would have been a lot better for her career if she had been in the this one as well. That's strong on your resume. Star of two Friday the 13th movies, and then they get to look at the box office associated with that. Instead, you're just one. They have a lot of characters that survive in this that don't get acknowledged in future movies. But then you have the uh, Tommy character, Tommy Jarvis, that does for many movies. Sweet, spooky disco music. Uh, got some coke in my fanny pack. Got a coffee table that looks like a disco ball. I'm about to chop up some lines. Get lit as fuck. Problem is the powder gets stuck in the cracks. It wasn't a good idea. Should have just got one big mirror. Instead I got all these little tiny mirrors and shit gets wasted because it's stuck in between. Occasionally I tip it upside down over the, counter, the kitchen counter. Shake it. Have a party. Sniff some brown dirty coke. Allegedly. Crystal Lake Variety Store? Is that what that says? Sign's not very easy to read. Oh, the hippies. We get to start with the hippie scene. I think they're hippies. Look out for the locomotive. Man, yeah, it's another time. This scene reminds me of going camping. These aren't the hippies. My bad. The hippies are later in the movie. See, like this shot right here, that's just so that that thing could look like it's 3D. He's the jerk? What the fuck? He accidentally stumbled. Maybe he does that all the fucking time and she's constantly on his case about it and he never improves. You guys seem like you belong together. Just 
So we're hearing on the news right now about the previous night's murders. So that's, I guess, how we're supposed to know that this picks up immediately afterward because you don't follow the same storyline or the same characters at all other than Jason. Jenny. I thought Jenny was a lucky name. That's why all my boats are Jennies. Fifteen Jennies. Oh, he doesn't have a mask or a bag on his head. They went with a much more imposing looking actor or stuntman to play Jason in this. He's quite a bit taller and, and more agile and athletic looking. Not not quite so barrel chested, but he looks like a fucking athlete. He looks like a big, strong guy. I think that they intended at the beginning to make this, or at least a large portion of this movie, without him wearing a mask. And they, they thought he was too ghoul and goblin-y, so they, they went with the mask to kind of give him more of an ambiguous human look. Did that motherfucker look like Harold, like your pot-bellied husband? She's a little bit cute, I didn't realize. Till that shot right there. She's not bad. Gotta take her hair out of those fucking curlers, though. They must have run the store. Or... Yeah, okay. Or work there. I don't know. That store probably doesn't make enough money to have employees. What does he look like? Oh, they do this and this too. It's basically stealing from Michael Myers, but there's a lot of stalking in the background shadow type shots. You got produce and shit in there? How long does that stay fresh for? Where do you get it? They gotta waste a lot of inventory with that shit. Who's coming down there and buying tomatoes and celery? You motherfucker, you're gonna sell that? This is a failing business if I've ever seen one. You're the only show in town, that's why you're having any success. What the fuck, dude? See, this is why big chains succeed. They're more strict on how shit goes. They provide a uniform experience. You never go in there and there's a donut missing out of your... Like McDonald's. It became reliable. You knew what you were going to get anywhere you went in the country. There was a McDonald's and you knew what you were going to get. It's the same everywhere. It's uniform. It's reliable. And as a result of that, because there's so many, they can afford to make less off of each burger because they're selling millions and millions of them. Whereas you sell 10 a day, so you've got to make a few bucks off each burger. It's not going to work. you got to sell them for way more. You, can, you couldn't start up a burger shop on your own today. Have one burger shop and sell 99 cent burgers. You'd lose money all fucking day. Not unless you're selling $12 milkshakes to go with it. As a five dollar milkshake. That's milk and ice cream. Five dollars. That's so funny. Five dollar milkshake nowadays would be cheap, but in the Pulp Fiction days it was expensive. Uh, <laughs> the fake ass snake lunging at the. S oh, so that's what I mean by some goofy ass shots. Only because it's in 3D. this lady do anything but yell? Oh, I really need the sounds of him taking a shit. Come on. What if I was eating? You guys got Coke and Pepsi crates. Oh, he's so pussy whipped. Oh, he's gonna get up without wiping his ass. So you just heard that gnarly shit coming out 
And uh, in, in horror movies, you can't wipe your ass when you hear a strange noise. You got to just get up and investigate and have mud butt. Is that the shadow of a machete? What is, oh no, it's that thing. I don't even know what that is, but it's not a machete. Looks like a good object to get impaled on though. And he's in perfect position to do so right now. Oh. They played with the use of the k k k ma, ma, ma. It used to only be when you were from the killer's perspective. We're no, definitely not from Jason's perspective right now. They just kind of use it when he's in the area now. Taking a shit is probably like one of the most vul vulnerable times of your day, right? Like you're pretty fucking defenseless when you're taking a shit, not unless you got a gun sitting next to you. You got your pants down around your ankles. You, well, I was gonna say you need to wipe your ass before you go anywhere, but clearly you don't. That was a lot of buildup for that cleaver in the chest. Harold, are you drinking whiskey in the bathroom again? She's dragging her feet as she walks. Let's go through shoes like a motherfucker. Did she take the doily off the table and put it on as a shirt? Looking like a low rent Charlize Theron. Not anymore. It's an albino rat. See, this is all because of 3D. And you can't even, t I couldn't even see that. That knitting needle is supposed to come through his fingers and towards you. But I couldn't even see it at all. It just blends into the blood. And I have a 58 inch TV. So if I can't see it, nobody can fucking see it. All right. You're, uh, I mean, you could use a wardrobe update, but you're pretty damn cute. Oh, Shelly. Shelly's the outcast who doesn't really fit in with anybody and is obsessed with horror movies. He's, he might be the first character in horror that represents the fans like he's the kind of guy that would be obsessed with watching these movies look at like a bootleg Seth Rogen oof the acting the, I, I think the reason that they were able to maintain success is because they never changed their formula. They never attempted to make these, well, I can't say never, but in the first five or six, they didn't try to make them high budget movies at all. They stayed with new faces, not paid very much, do it as cheap as you can, make it as quick as you can, pump it out. So as a result, they didn't have to be that successful in the box office to be highly profitable. So, they just had to be moderately successful in the box office. <laughs> and you still made a ton of money because you didn't pay anything to make it. You got all these kids that think it's their next big break to be in a Friday the 13th movie because it's a hot ticket item. It's popular in pop culture at the moment. Now we get the stoners. Y'all brought separate bongs. They got his and her bongs. That's dedication. And there's no way that they filled that van up with smoke that quick and got smoke to start rushing out. Not if they were inhaling. 
You have a bag of weed and a bunch of pre-rolled joints. Why don't just why do you need to pre-roll? Why well, don't The girl in the middle is pregnant. So we have a the murder of a pregnant woman in this film. They're smoking weed in the van with the pregnant girl. So many goofy shots because it was in 3D. I wonder how excited people were to watch it in the theater in 3D back then. I bet they thought it was pretty cool, but I don't. Are the red and blue lights on the same side as the red and blue lenses? He's about to eat all of his weed a la Tommy Chong for no reason. We're pregnant. Is that his girlfriend? That looked like some really shitty weed. I'd be curious to see what kind of weed they got back then. Oh, now he looks like Robin Williams. Stoner Robin Williams. Where the fuck are these popos off to? Can't pull over. We're pulled over already. Can't pull over any farther. He looks like, uh, fuck, what's his name? From Chips. Uh, uh, God damn it, I can't think of his name. The Hispanic guy from Chips. That's who that cop looked like. Or do. So they work in a weird backstory with this girl. And they start fucking with, like, past timelines without really realizing what they're doing, I don't think. And that is a continued theme in the franchise. So apparently she was attacked five years prior to this by Jason in the woods. And that's why she's all weirded out. But they take a while to explain that to us. This is replacement Ralph. The act Ralph got murdered in the last one, and the actor died, I believe. So uh, they had to come up with a new Ralph. It's it's so formulaic and ritualized. This just new cast of characters, sexy girls heading out in the woods, getting stoned. We got the stoner. We got the hot chick. We got the pregnant chick. We got the crazy guy. We got the jock dude. We got the outcast. This guy's got a balloon full of black tar heroin. I'm not moved. <laughs> Maybe my bowels, that's about it. That's Ricky the Ass Bridge. Is that foreshadowing or just because? I don't remember that coming into play later. There's no way that that's Jason. I don't know why they're trying to make it look like it is. That's Rick, right? I think that's Rick. Why don't we take our bags in the house first? Let's say that multiple times in two sentences. Carpet on the inside of that van. <laughs> How disgusting. Why aren't you guys going skinny dipping? That's what these movies are for. Reliably. Hi. God damn, she's cute. And uh, she held up pretty well, too, over the years. Did not age that much at all. It's got good genetics. 
Oh, the acting. <laughs> That's the problem. Is like it's. They knew what they were and what their goal was, and they just went with that. They. They never tried to be a well acted, well written, deep storyline, twists and turns. Like I said before, it's all very formulaic. Rinse and repeat. And so because of that, you never get any established actors because you aren't paying enough to get those people. See, so she's been back and she or been here before and she knows him. <laughs> oh, she was here last summer? I think she might be the best acting performance in... I mean, that wasn't horrible. She would have been able to see him. From our angle, we can't see him, and it's shocking to us, but where was he that she could not see him when she reached in there? Hold on, is there skinny dipping going on and we didn't get to see it? Off-screen skinny dipping? Come on, what's the point? Okay, that fucking barn is responsible for a couple of nightmares in my life. Like, exactly like that. What the fuck? That's a hammock. You didn't inform her prior to the trip that she'd be sleeping on a hammock? I mean, they're comfortable, but goddamn, you gotta warn a motherfucker. Where's Ben? All right. Because I don't understand. Why do you guys have so much pig? You Sounds like he's wasting a shitload of money and he's not good at recognizing a bad investment and cutting his losses. Sounds like I should get into business with your dad and overcharge him for things. He's just so willy-nilly with his spending habits. Filling a barn up with hay. Doesn't have anything that eats hay. How do you get rid of it if no, nothing eats it? It just stays in there? You just keep filling it up? I think she'd be considerably heavier than uh, those bales of hay. He'd notice something was up. Spoilers. He's pulling her up, not hay. And she's like, take me, farmer boy, with your leather gloves. I have a pair of gloves just like that. I'm sure his are vintage, though. <laughs> This is kind of the signature of Friday the 13th because of the 3D and spoilers again, it's the one where Jason gets his mask. So going forward from here is the Jason that we all recognize today, but it's not one of the better movies. I think four might be my favorite one. I liked five too, other than the fact that it's not Jason, that it's a copycat. But, uh, also, I think I just happened to have seen that one more when I was younger. It's like, if you go to the video store and they tend to only have one of the Friday the 13th movies in stock and it's that one, so you're like, fuck it, I'll watch that one again. That kind of thing. That's why I've seen a, a new beginning many times and I haven't seen a final chapter that many times. The motherfucker was always checked out. Somebody always had Friday the 13th Part 4. 
Oh, Shelly. This is not how to get on people's good side. Don't look at him. <laughs> he laughed like a Pillsbury Doughboy. Kind of looks like one, too. It's more of a prank than a joke. There was no joke there. You just scared the shit out of everybody and then told them, Psych! This asshole. <laughs> he deserved that. Goddamn, another Volkswagen bug. Is that all they can get for horror movies? Fuck is she going? Oh. They about to roll out to the stow and make some frenemies. Thing has pizza cutters for tires. What's this random chain link fence out in the middle of fucking camp? That's out of place. I think they shot this in California, if I'm not mistaken. It looks like cheatgrass. Maybe not. It's pretty tall for cheatgrass. Do you guys know what cheatgrass is? I don't know what it's actually called. We call it cheatgrass. It's those dry, yellowish... Fucking, it's like a weed grass looking thing. It almost looks like grass that's so long it has seeds on it, but it also looks dead. And if you walk by, those fucking things stick all over in your socks and poke you in the ankles. Oh, I missed the, we don't set food stamps. She looks like she's a member of Show Nuff's gang from The Last Dragon. Who's the master? Show enough. Leroy. She looks straight out of that movie. Looks pretty out of place, actually. And her biker shit's not dirty enough. She doesn't seem legit. She looks like she's wearing a costume. No, I mean, I'm going to punch you in the fucking throat if you don't give me the wallet back right now. You bring pussy-ass Shelly with you, what the fuck is he going to do? He thinks that he's going to impress a girl by pretending that he got hit in the head with an axe. He's definitely not going to impress him getting punked by this fucking... Yeah. Well, if you were some kind of a man and stood up for yourself, maybe she wouldn't have had to feed him a 20. It's better off getting, costing you $20 than getting your ass handed to you. Now another ridiculous 3D shot. Oh, it started. It sounds like shit, but it started. Is that just what those sound like? Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Yeah. Fucking Shelly. Accidentally ran over their motorcycles. It's one thing if you did it on purpose, like you're trying to start a fight, but uh, to be a little bitch like you are and accidentally do it, and now you found yourself a fight and you can't do anything about it, that is no bueno. You gotta stay in your lane, bro. Oh, I missed the chain punch through the window because I was picking at an ingrown hair on my leg. Motherfucker. <laughs> Went too far this time.
Oh man, now you really made an enemy. They're gonna find your bitch ass. Oh, acting. God damn it. <laughs> Odd that they chose to up the sex appeal with the pregnant character. Come on, man. <laughs> I mean, she doesn't look pregnant. She's probably not in real life. But in my head, I'm going, she's sexy. Oh, she's pregnant, though. Like, see, Jason without a mask again. So he just doesn't have his mask until he finds the, uh, the hockey mask. He gets it from Shelly, of course, because Shelly brought that little tiny briefcase looking thing. And he's got a wetsuit, a harpoon gun, two masks, a machete, wig, all that shit, and a change of clothes in that little tiny briefcase. Here's Rick with a fucking sweater, or is that a vest? No, he's got a sweater over his shoulders, but untied. He looks like a cross between a waspy tennis playing douchebag and a fake poser cowboy. Nobody sees Jason just staring across from the open barn door. But Charlie bit me. And it really hurt Charlie. It's still hurting. Whose car is this? Y'all just... Mer or, uh, fuck, I can't. Musical chairs, the car? It's just whoever's car, whoever wants the car can drive the car. I wonder if Jason's driven the car. He was doing very well last night. Let's go for a swim. I don't know. Oh, come on. We'll be all alone. Okay, I'm going to change my mind and go with the fact that I'm pretty sure the actress isn't actually cute, so I'm going to admire her body. I don't feel like I'm going out of bounds by doing that. And he must be the dad. Again, no ass, and we hadn't discovered thongs for some reason. I don't know why that took so long. Decent set of hangers, though. Not bad, not bad. Little Nice little, like, handfuls. Oh, they tried to juke us. Make it look like it was Jason. They found them quick with no motorcycles. He's siphoning gas while smoking a cigarette. He's brilliant. Springsteen, the boss. Think I snow USA? What? Let's try to read the license plate cover. Nice topaz jewelry. The fuck or turquoise, whatever it's called. Wannabe sons of anarchy shit. What made her decide to go investigate the barn? What the fuck did she think she was going to find in there? Besides a grizzly dude that wants to kill you. I don't mean just Jason. What if there's some farmer in there working? He just decides to hit you upside the head with a backhoe. Backhoe's a tractor, huh? I meant a regular hoe. He hoed that hoe. Whoop that trick. Get him. <laughs> Set of shoes hanging up on the wall. Oh, Creeper Jason. This is very Michael Myers-like. And of course Michael had done it first. But they they shot out the first two Halloweens and then packed it in with the Michael Myers. They thought they were done there. Ch -ch -ch -ch. 
And the Friday the 13th movies just kept on trucking. If you're going to say anything about them, you got to give them that they're prolific. Jesus, they put out a lot of movies. She deserves to die for going through other people's shit. You know, it'd be worth catching him do it. Or it'd be worth him doing it just so I could catch him. God damn it, I had to fuck that line up too. You see what happens, Larry? You see what happens when you fuck people in the ass? As I stand here before you today... The Laker girls need to be taking down a peg or two. None of this is really scary at this point. It's just... Basically, you watch these movies because you want to see some tits and ass. And you want to watch some gore and some people die. Like, you want to... You want to watch a bunch of people die, and you want to see some tits and ass. That's basically it. And then they kind of, you know, they need to work a little bit of story into humor you. But that about it. Because I'm already a little bit bored with the suspenseful score and following people around. Is his cigarette even lit? No, it doesn't look like it. You're just walking around with your cigarette in your mouth like you're a poker player with a cigar. Stop screwing around. You're the one screwing around. Light that cigarette or spit it out. It's time to shit or get off the pot. Just smoke it, yo. You shouldn't hang out with anybody that you have to call Fox in a serious manner. You want me to actually call you Fox? Better be your last name. I'll call Rick Fox Fox. But he hasn't asked me. I just call him Rick. It's not a bad shot pinned up on the wall. Oh, another pitchfork kill. And more 3D effects. Yes! 3D. Fuck yeah. Coming through to save the motherfucking day. Yeah. 3D, fuck yeah, is it gonna translate and age very well? 3D, fuck yeah, doesn't look very good when you watch it in 2D. This isn't Samuel L. Jackson. I feel like at this point in time... This guy and Samuel L. Jackson could have switched career paths, but this guy gets killed by Jason, and Samuel L. Jackson gets to go on and star in all the movies that require a bald black guy. This is kind of some sweet justice moment, though, because... These motherfuckers aren't good people. They were there siphoning gas, and she wandered into the bar and who knows what for. So, uh, you don't mind Jason killing them. It's almost like a good deed. He's some vigilante justice Dexter shit. God damn. Those, that sound, that... <laughs> I 
I can walk on my hands like that. I'm streaky with it, though. It's inconsistent. I can't see him? I think this is a scene where he gets killed. Walk it. Oh, never mind. I was wrong. So wrong. And I'm never gonna dance again. Guilty feet have got no rhythm. <laughs> uh, he finally took his sweater off of his back and put it on his front and his back. He got in between his sweater. To exercise the demons. Why else would I come back here? This house is not clear. Oh man, I got a bad tooth. It's hurting me. It's hurting me. They are juggling in this scene because they originally wanted to do paddle balls and it was too hard to get a paddle ball to fly up and look into the 3D camera. So Shelly knew how to juggle. He taught the other guy how to juggle and they shot this scene. And this is really impressive to the women. Shelly just knows how to hit it off with the ladies. Juggling, fake axe wounds, masks, rubber knives. He knows exactly what women want. He's like Mel Gibson. Honestly. Is her ass supposed to look nice? I mean, it's not bad, but... She definitely looks like she's never walked up a flight of stairs in her life. Women exercising just wasn't a thing then, like really, unless you were playing some kind of sport. Most everybody's fairly fit with it when they're young, and then it was just a slow slide downhill from there for pretty much everybody. <laughs> bitch you're fucking weird dude stop being you uh, her ass isn't that bad but the, those pants aren't doing her any favors and that shot wasn't particularly flattering bent over in the fireplace they could have done better if that's supposed to be the moment that he became enthralled with her posterior So, I believe that he thinks that the proper reaction to that is to now sneak up on her and scare her yet again. He's a slow learner, this Shelly guy. Two people sleeping on a hammock? You guys are going to fuck in a hammock? Well, I think you can figure something out. Well, I'm going to have to go. Are you naked now? Come on. Naked is naked. Are they going out of their way to show less nudity in this one? What is up with that? That's not what we normally get. The first one was decent amount of nudity. The second one was Terry fully fucking nude for a good amount of time. Ass, bush, tits, the whole nine. And it seems like they're going out of their way to show nipples in this. It's a weird change up. 
Maybe they're saving it for the big hurrah. That's because you're a little whore and you need to go to church. Her sweater is... F <laughs> looks like it's moving on my TV. It looks like the ocean. Or like static. Blue static. It's kind of crazy. Excuse me. <coughs> so she's discovering the day in the past <coughs> when uh, she got attacked by Jason. For some reason, I want to say this is supposed to be five years prior, but I could be totally wrong, and I didn't hear her. And it is Jason with no fucking mask. <sighs> he looks stupid. I gotta be honest. I'm way less afraid of him when, with that face. Because I don't believe it's a real thing. She got away? I thought that there was like a maybe... A Implied rape here. Is she pregnant with Jason's baby? If you're gonna have Michael Myers essentially rape and impregnate his niece in the Halloween franchise, I suppose you can have Jason drag this girl into the woods and fuck her. It didn't really happen. I guess it kind of helps the story because that's why she's all freaked out. But her being freaked out to me doesn't have much bearing on the whole situation. It's just like they just had to come up with a story and they're like, well, this is a story. And someone else is like, it sure is. And they're like, okay, qualifies, checks all the boxes. It's a story. Yeah, but it's a Volkswagen in a horror movie, bro. It's not going to be reliable. Ted Bundy is the only person that's ever had a reliable Volkswagen. You're going to have to walk back? Strong move, chief. Talking about a great white chief. Dark-haired guy run by... A dark haired guy go in the water. Shark in the water. <laughs> you ever seen a shark's eyes, Chief? Sort of like dog's eyes, all black like. Is this the stoner dude? I'm at the patio door smoking, so I I have like a side view of my tea. It is the stoner dude. Is he gonna come out and take a shit and not wipe also? You know Joe Grizzly doesn't wipe in Rob Zombie's Halloween too. It's just a thing that they don't have time to do. I think actually in Halloween 2018, I don't know if that girl's just sitting on the toilet reading her phone or if she's actually pooping or what was going on, but she definitely didn't wipe before she got killed by Michael. Oh, shit. I almost smacked the cherry in my cigarette. He's hiding to smoke weed? He was blatantly doing it before. Why would he need to hide now? This doesn't make sense to me. Just so they could have an outhouse kill? He didn't- he pulled up his pants without wiping either! God damn it, there's two dudes who don't wipe their ass and get killed in this? 
that must be the unforgivable sin. That's the lesson to be learned from all this, is wipe your ass. Why didn't you just shit in your pants if you weren't gonna bother to wipe your ass? You're gonna have to go take a shower now. Just jump in the lake. Leave your clothes there. Walk home naked. It's Friday the 13th. Everyone's entitled to one good scare. So was he hiding because he didn't want to share? That seems like more of a cocaine person thing to do. Weed people like to share unless it's frowned upon by those around. But he was smoking weed in the van in an enclosed space with all of them, so I don't know why he would need to hide from them now to smoke a joint. <laughs> he still didn't wipe his ass. I gotta take a piss, I'll be right back. Game on! Did you guys miss me? What did I miss? It doesn't look like I missed a goddamn thing. God damn it, Shelly. Like... How little self-awareness do you need to have to think that this is a good idea? How could she not hate you? She's based, she's made it abundantly clear to you she doesn't like this shit. You just had a quasi-argument. You called her a bitch and your solution was, eh, I'll keep doing more of the same. Jesus Christ. You can't force people to like you. She doesn't like you. You're pretty unlikable, honestly. You can't get mad at other people if you're unlikable. That's not their fault. <laughs> that, that's on you. And if being you means you're unlikable, well, I guess you're gonna have to swallow that pill. Now is she gonna get naked? <laughs> Uh, I heard there was gonna be punch and pie. I'm here for the punch and pie. I came for the beer and the bitches. My people are coming to think we have punch and pie. Oh, Shelly sees something suspicious, and even though he is the horror fan, and if anybody should know better than this, it's him. Like, he sets people up for pranks and gags like this, and now he's just gonna walk into a real-life one. Just, doo -doo, I wonder what's going on here. Well, we've already pointed out he's not a very smart guy. So, uh... He didn't believe it could happen to him, I suppose. But it can. It can happen to you. And it will. It will. Saying what, what way? My name's Shelly. I don't party. You guys doing something I shouldn't see? He talks like he's talking to a little kid talking to his parents, like he's sneaking in their room at midnight. You guys doing something I shouldn't see? <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
Do we see Jelly? Jelly. Do we see Shelly die? If I remember right, I think that they filmed it and he couldn't pull it off in a realistic way and they just said never mind and did an off screen death. She's going through Shelly's wallet now. Hmm. And she dropped it in the water? What the fuck, man? Bunch of people with two left feet and butterfingers in this fucking movie. That's also part of the point. I think when you, they want you as an audience member to be going, no, don't do that. You can't go in there. So part of it is they have to be dumb. They just can't be so fucking dumb. And there it is, the unveiling. Jason wearing Shelly's mask. I can't believe she thinks that's Shelly. The build on that guy is nothing compared to Shelly. That guy's a fucking animal compared to Shelly. 3D shot again. Fatality. He's a pretty good shot with a harpoon gun. I wonder if he had experience. Does he kill the blonde girl in the reboot with a harpoon gun? Or is that like a javelin thing when he stabs through the deck and gets her in the top of the head? So these two are fucking on the hammock. So that's weird because a hammock doesn't seem to be conducive to f forward and backward motion. It seems to be a side to side thing and f fucking side to side. I think you would have to do like a uh, a spoon like doggy style laying on your sides type thing and use the sway to your advantage. Maybe not. Maybe you think you're moving and you're not because you're just swinging back and forth. You like it? You want some juice? <laughs> the shower scene. My wife is terrified that something's going to happen to her while she's in the shower. I swear to God. It, I mean, along with taking a shit, a shower is a pretty vulnerable situation. You're completely naked. You're soaking wet. And you're about as confined and closed in and cornered off as you're ever going to be. And you're surrounded by objects that'll kill you if you hit your head on them, like a toilet and a bathtub. A lot of times a glass shower door. This is a very dangerous situation. It's slippery. I think her death is a copy of a Kevin Bacon, of the Kevin Bacon death from the original. If I remember right, very similar. Did they think they were going to get a PG rating or they thought they could get away with more gore if they didn't have... For, okay, for this, they put a camera in the floor. They built a plexiglass floor and put the camera in the floor pointing up and then shot that shot of him splitting him in half. Dick to face. Clearly didn't have the effects budget to show the aftermath, though. And they're staring away from the nudity so hard. I don't get what they were doing there. It's not really staying true to their brand. We got a silhouette of her naked and teases of her tits. Are you pregnant? Her dude was gonna get her a beer while she's pregnant. He wants a spontaneous abortion.
Andy, what's going on? Andy? I haven't seen you for like a few minutes. You've been quiet. Andy? You asleep again? said, give me a beer. Is she looking at nudie magazines? Listen to me, nudie magazine. What the fuck am I? <laughs> Somehow Jason's under there and she doesn't know. How could he get under there without her knowing? It's raining. It's raining red. It's raining inside. The latex pushed up way too much there when the knife was going through. There was too much resistance. It looked fake. Her skin looked like it stretched. And how did Jason get there? The hammock is fucking see-through. Somebody making Jiffy Pop? Oh, he's making popcorn on a stove? I ain't never seen anybody do that. I mean, I've seen Jiffy Pop, but not in a, a saucepan on the stove. That's some old school shit there. Fucking moth just came in my house. Cocksucker. There's no light in here except the TV and the candle. Hopefully the candle's the one he chooses to fly to. Oh, bitch. I'd catch him, but I have my phone in one hand and a cigarette in the other. I'm not going in the house with my lit cigarette, so... Is he gonna go take another shit and not wipe? Way to play into the stereotype that potheads are loners, dude. I guess I kind of do that too. Is he doing self affirmation with Stuart Smalley? I'm good enough, I'm smart enough, and gosh darn it, there's nothing to be afraid of. This is like me, the time that my dad had separated ribs and I had to crawl underneath our single white trailer to shut the water off. And I just was convinced that there was snakes and spiders and all kinds of shit that wanted to kill me down there. Or you could look at it as like a, a version of the furnace scene from Home Alone with higher stakes. I think there's someone in here. Paul, there's fucking someone in here. You're fucking someone in here? Is it me? No, it's Muffin Paul. Jesus. If Paul's leadership is anything like his fucking, he couldn't hit the G-spot on a 12-pound pussy. So Shelly's still stumbling around alive after having his throat slit several minutes ago in runtime. He would have died on the spot. That's better. It's about to be great. <laughs> Power surge, he's hulking out. God damn, the lines are so inauthentically delivered in almost every circumstance. <laughs> I don't know why I think this is funny. <laughs> Jerry, <coughs> Jerry. Ooh, he's got a red hot fire poker. 
Jason's been suspended five times this year already for getting a little crazy with his dick. All right. Okay. Jason's the real Night King. See how he handled his business there? Fucking Night King. Was ever a more hyped up character with a less payoff? Fucking popcorn fart. Maybe we should go in, and I could try to fuck you. Aw, oh, Rick, that's not gonna happen. Drink this drink and we'll see. It's nailed shut. You haven't seen The Hateful Eight? You gotta kick it in. It's nailed shut. One piece of wood won't do it. You gotta use two. Nail it in. You're not going to get your security deposit back. That place is going to smell like smoke now. Andy, Deb, you guys up there? Is your flashlight even on? His flashlight's not on. Why is he holding it out? In oh, it is. It's not producing very much light. This is the most well-lit room without power I've ever seen. Doesn't look dark at all. <laughs> Except outside. Oh, Rick's about to get his head squished. Jason's gonna nab him up. Run him out of there. I gotta find Bubba! Bubba? Bubba Gum Shrimp Corporation. Just around the corner, incapable of making a single peep, is Rick. And he will now get his head crushed, and I believe still not be able to make a single noise. We have a more intelligent Jason in this. But again, that's what makes him seem more Michael Myers like, God damn it, that looked so fake. Oh, it looked like a plastic ass eyeball on a doll head. I get that they want to come up with creative stuff and kind of push the envelope and be new and novel and different, but if you can't execute it effectively, don't bother. I'd rather see a well done, less novel kill than that shit. Can you even hear me talk? I just realized I was hiding the thing, holding the thing way away from my face. That's what she said. What kind of shoes does she have on? Rick was wearing Nikes. Hers kind of looked like Reeboks. Jason killed the pregnant girl and then put her back in the bathtub. Is there nobody in there? It's just... Oh. Yummy. I stand alone inside. I stand alone, stand alone. I walk these empty streets on the boulevard of broken dreams Don't know where it leads, but it's only me and I walk alone Rick! 
frantic tick 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 tock frantic tick 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 tock frantic Damn, my ears got hot doing that. <laughs> now my hair's all in my face. Whoever's been cleaning these windows does a really half-assed job. They don't attempt to get the corners at all. My five-year-old cleans windows better than that. That's also partly because he thinks it's an interesting thing to do. It's not a chore to him. He thinks it's fun, like it's a new and different. <laughs> That'll all wear off very quickly once it's a requirement. Once he's forced to do it, he will not want to anymore. Ooh, somebody sitting by a window. Wonder what's going to happen here. Conveniently framed so that the majority of the shot is the window. Oh, never mind. We're going to go with the other window. I didn't even see it coming. Once you went to the long shot and had both windows, I no longer thought somebody was going to fly through the window. Not... I definitely did. Look at that scary motherfucker. It's a good look. They nailed it with the hockey mask. And again, it's... In so many ways, similar to Michael Myers. It's white. It's pretty much ambiguous. Emotion-wise and facial feature-wise. It's just got a little bit more design worked into it. I believe that there were some people on the special effects team that were hockey fans. And so they lobbied to get him to wear a hockey mask. And they liked the look, so they stuck with it. <clears throat> I just wish they hadn't played around. They show his face in every movie. And they don't fucking need to stop showing his face. I'm less scared when I know exactly what he looks like. Let me imagine it on my own. Because I'm more scared of a psychopathic person than I am of a fake monster. So with the hockey mask, I'm like, okay, this is, again, like Michael Myers, at least the shape of a man. I can get on board with this. Once you show me his face and he looks like uh, some kind of pig boy, and I'm like, yeah, whatever. Good for him. And I still don't understand why he's deformed. The only reason that they stuck with that is because he was deformed at the end of the original when he pulls Alice into the water off the canoe. And that was a dream sequence. It wasn't real. It was her imagination. There was no reason that you had to stick with that as canon and treat it as part of the lore and make his his eyeballs all fucked up and deformed. He could have been just a normal kid. Mrs. Voorhees seemed like she was pretty normal. Uh, I wouldn't say well adjusted, but maybe prior to the drowning, she was. Conservative looking. Didn't look like the type of woman that would produce a deformed kid. <sighs> And also, when he's got the hockey mask on, his eyes are lined up. But when he doesn't have the hockey mask on, his eyes are askew. Falls in a well, eyes go crossed, gets kicked by a mule, they go straight. I don't know. See what happens when you buy cheap clothes? What jacket has a seam down the back? They probably had to custom make it so that they could shoot that shot. But I don't think I've ever seen a jacket that has a seam down the middle of the back. She has kind of a Sydney Prescott, Laurie Strode quality to her. She's just not as good of an actress. No offense. Just the way it is. Things will never be the same. I'm talking about changes. You talk about practice? We're not even talking about a game. We're talking about practice. I bet that log was heavy. It was just, but she should have chose something she could swing more effectively. And why hit him once? Oh. See, this is what they want me to do. They want me to be frustrated at the fact that she didn't attempt to incapacitate him. She just 
knocked him down and ran away and bought herself a few seconds. He's going to be at the window any second. He should be there already. What is he doing? Is he on top? Nope, he's not on top. That van's not all-wheel drive. Better than those pizza cutter ass Volkswagen tires. He's just gonna stand there and oh, he jumped out of the way. Huh, because that's something that Michael wouldn't do. You never see Michael move in an agile way, really. But Jason will do some shit like that, apparently. Instead of just sitting there like a crash test dummy and letting the car slam into him, and then miraculously being okay. <laughs> Oh, it was foreshadowing. She stuck on the shitty bridge. You goddamn Mongolians come tear down my she wall. Welcome to Shitty Walk. We have shitty chicken and shitty beef. Yes. <laughs> Damn, that is some deep writing. You see what they did there? The bikers siphoned out all the gas, and so now the van doesn't have gas. So she ran out of gas. So this time it was not the auto manufacturer's fault. It was the biker's fault for stealing all the gas. Siphoning uh, petrol from cars. There wasn't enough snap in his head to break through that glass. Come on, bro. You gotta really get some force into that. Like you're trying to headbutt somebody's nose through the back of their face. Punch their knee through the front of their stomach. Treat them like they got an itch on the front of their back. Have you ever seen the front of your back? Well, not the back of your front, not the back of your back, the front of your back. Just before the middle? Dude looks like he has huge fucking traps. Now you just can't leave. Does he know what he's looking for or doing? Did you really think she was behind there and she piled all that shit in front of herself? That's almost as dumb as Chucky wrapping himself in a box and putting a shipping label on the outside of it after he's already wrapped up. Uh, I didn't even make it sound as ridiculous as it actually is. He somehow puts himself inside a box, closes the box, wraps the box in butcher paper, and then ships it. Come on, Jason. This hiding spot is almost as creative as hiding under the bed. You haven't looked up once. It hasn't looked up to anybody. That's part of his problem. I think if he just went to some NA meetings and he... Uh... Oh, this scene? So essentially, this was in sequence. So they were done using the barn. It was the end of shooting. And to film this, they told him to just go in there and fuck up the barn. Like, we don't need any more. Destroy it. Oof. Butt to face. Butt to face. Butt to face. Like, she literally slammed her ass right into his face. It's a shame he probably didn't appreciate it. I would've. I guess if you can't go out, going up isn't a bad idea. Because if he chases you up, that gives you time to go back down. Get on up. Get on up. Up on the scene. Get on up. Tossed aside like a paperweight. Jason, the skin on your neck looks kind of fucked up. That was a half-hearted swing if I've ever seen one. These weapons are too heavy for her to wield. 
That would have hurt, no doubt, but it definitely wouldn't have killed him. And I believe the intention with this was to be... As they were making it, they wanted this to be the end. They wanted to kill Jason here. They wanted it to be finito, no mas. Damn, hung him by his neck until he is dead and killed him and he died. Now shoot arrows into his chest for target practice. Or just come back here in those high-waisted jeans and let me rub up on you for a minute. Considering what you've been through, you've got beautiful hair. <laughs> this thing was ten foot tall. And he had beautiful hair. <laughs> Looked like he had six fingers on each hand. I'll come out here. And rough talk him and run him out of here. <laughs> if you don't know what I'm talking about, look up North Carolina Sasquatch on YouTube. I'm pretty sure that'll get you there. It's a news report about a guy in North Carolina who can barely speak English, who swears that he, uh, and English is his first language, his only language, presumably who swears that he saw a Sasquatch out by his dog kennel. And I come out here and rough talk him and run him off. Jason never skipped a day of PE class. Oh, the face. Sounds like the fat kid in Little Giants running the mile. What the fuck? He's still alive? Oh! That was a nice comeback spot. Gives her a chance to grab the axe. Another thing that is going to be heavy for her to wield. Unless it's got a plastic handle. Bazunga. Now he reaches out like fucking zombie style. Oh, 3D. They were trying to go for the... That culminating 3D moment. So you can see how much more susceptible or mortal Jason was back then. Like... They intended for this to be the last movie when they made it, and they wanted that to be the final blow. That was supposed to be what killed him. Far from as uh, resilient and durable as he becomes in the future. And I like it better when he's more vulnerable. Because it's just... It seems like a foregone conclusion otherwise. Like, what the fuck's the point? I enjoy the struggle. So most of my favorite fights are good, long, hard, back-and-forth fights. I'm not so much into, like, a quick knockout. Unless it's epic status, but... All right, now, only two movies later, we're going to copy the end of the original. Like, you see this coming a mile away. The twist is that it's Jason's mom instead of Jason. So, of course, it's got to be a dream because her bitch's head's cut off. We don't even know where her body is. Just a little bit more goofiness. She doesn't even know about Jason's mom, does she? Or is that in the next movie? Am I wrong? I guess we're going to find out. But you're definitely expecting something right here. Motherfuckers. Jump scare before the jump scare. So you, you do the, oh, okay, huh, and that, oh, she sees him through the window, that's right. 
with the axe slice in his head. I guess they made his eyes more even in this. They're not as askew. He used to have one that was way below the other. Like he had a lopsided head. So she sees him and he comes running out after her. Okay, I remember that. <clears throat> it's the way she's bending over. He can't help himself. Look at the... She's in the ready position. So she had a hallucination within a dream? Because this is obviously fake. And by the way, dreams never make this much sense. It's never a cohesive story. It's always like weird images and you're like, somebody was trying to hit me with a car. It's a guy I've never spoken to. I just know his name. He's a customer at work. Some stupid thing like that. It's never like a, a full scene that way. Now they have to over explain themselves. Instead of coming up with a creative way to show us that that was a dream for her, the cops have to spell it out in really poorly acted dialogue. Now she's super PTSD. She's off her rocker. If anybody should have gone the Tommy route of like insanity, her totally, her and Tommy could have teamed up. Oh, damn. Screaming and hysterical laughing. Her brain's broken. <laughs> it's over. It's a wrap, son. Call it a day. Stick a fork in her. She's gonna live out her days with some padded walls. So you wanted him to dead or you didn't. Or spit. You wanted him to be dead or you didn't. What's this, sh this shot here supposed to imply? Because I'm positive during the production of this, they intended for it to be the last one. Are they just nailing it home? Like, yes, he's. That is what they're doing. They're trying to make it concrete for you. No motion. He's dead. Now we go back to the lake where I'm. He's dead over there. His mom was never in the lake. Her head's chopped off. I don't believe any of that. Ooh. Now we got the thriller version of Friday the 13th music. I got this feeling like someone's watching. Oh, okay. Like someone's watching me. Alrighty then. That was Friday the 13th part three. I appreciate you guys sticking with me through it. It was a little more mundane and boring than the previous two, I gotta be honest, but not horrible. And, uh, you know, they did what they did and they go where they go, and I'm along for the ride because I decided to take this shindig on. It still wasn't bad, we'll get into bad ones later down the road, but they're still totally watchable. And I'll be honest, I don't know why I don't have some of these in my collection. Because I have all the Halloweens except for Halloween 3 for obvious reasons. But I just never really added other ones to my collection except for the screams. Bad on me, I guess. Thankfully, Prime has like the whole series available except for the first two. Streaming right now. And that will be the case, hopefully, until I'm done with the series. So, you can check me out on YouTube or my podcast. Just type... Avarice podcast into whatever search engine or platform you're on and it should be there you can also find me on instagram at Avarice podcast please like share subscribe all that good shit until the next time this is devin signing off and saying be easy